people who realized they had bad therapists. What were the red flags? I went to an appointment and the door was locked. I waited 15 minutes and called him. No response. He texted me back a few minutes later and said he had the flu and was in bed and sorry he didn't call to cancel. I went to the grocery store instead. I saw him shopping. He ducked when he saw me. I never went back to him. When he was on the news for banging a client, it was his arrest photo, because it's a crime. He was her marriage counselor, and he was married, so was the client. I was 13. The therapist was an older woman who, upon first meeting me, insisted to my mother that I was on drugs. I wasn't and that clearly my father and or brother were molesting me. My father and brother have never, ever touched me inappropriately. This was one sick itch who needed help herself. So I went to child therapy back in the day, but the therapist always had my dad in the room with my sisters and I, because of that I was never able to tell her about how he was abusing my sisters and I, I remember every time I answered a question I'd be looking at him for an okay on the answer, she literally never caught on. Recently started therapy and had about 5-6 sessions with the same guy. The last two sessions he was either late or had shared some bad news going on in his life, and had multiple uninterrupted rants of 15 plus minutes or more where the subject matter was only tangentially related at the absolute best. It wasn't. During those rants, name dropped public figures in my sphere and told secrets about them, unprofessional and sloppy. We sat there in silence for a few moments and then he said, I've been doing coffee enemas. Dude what? That was the last time I saw him. I became resentful to their advice and felt myself digging in against their suggestions. I wouldn't say she was a bad therapist at all, just that her styles clashed. Important that you not only have a good therapist, but one that fits well for you. Ha 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 ha. Oh, this takes me back. She stopped me in the middle of a session to tell me that the real problem was that I made everything about myself which would have been a valid point, had she not continued like right now. You're just talking about yourself, and about your life. Every week you just talk about yourself. You know I just had a baby a few months ago, before I ever started going to her, but you never ask me how that's going. You never ask me about my life, or my friends, or my relationship with my husband. If you're like this with everyone in your life, I can imagine why people don't like being around you. I left super ashamed and never went back. He told me several times how pretty he thinks I am. He also refused to believe me when I said I think have PTSD. I definitely had PTSD. When our marriage counselor told us he had been divorced six times. I went to see him in emotional distress. At first I thought he was having a bad day. Stifled yawns, staring blankly needing cues to respond to questions then asking me to repeat the question. I served him at my place of work 10 years later. He had no idea that he saved my life. Because I was so angry I complained to the health commissioner and it gave me a made me blame myself for years. Ended up diagnosed with PTSD from the sexual assault over a decade later. Told me I was fine and couldn't have depression PTSD confirmed diagnosis from three doctors and still struggling because I kept my grades up and that nothing clearly was wrong with me and I was making it up even when I disclosed being unable to leave my dorm room for several days at a time and missing class salad insomnia executive dysfunction etc profs are the real MVPs here allowing the absences and my sister keeping me alive also threatened to report me to police as a violent offender for expressing anger not even threats or desire to do anything. I was just angry at the person and my whole situation, at the person who caused all the issues. Never trusted a therapist again. Mandated reporting shouldn't be used as a threat to patients you don't want to deal with. Woo for free uni counseling. Ironically she went to one of my classes to give a seminar about seeking help for depression and suicide after a classmate passed away and listed off all my symptoms I told her. Um, freaking itch. She's still a therapist too, freaking up more unsuspecting kids who can't get access to decent health care. I was 39 and had unearthed my wife's affair only a week previously. Was just a total heartbroken, shattered mess. 
His recovery plan was to make a man out of me and that video games were for children. He was well into his 70s, fired, since remarried. I still play the video games. The one I went to after my suicide attempt at 16 had some not so compassionate opinions. My very first session, one thing I told her was that I was bullied a lot at school. Her response was, well, suicide attempts are usually done in order to manipulate others. So since you were capable of that, did you ever consider maybe you were the bully? I really never spoke to her again. I had to go weekly because of my attempt, but I just sat in silence every session until I could stop going. Equating my suicide attempt to me being a manipulator after knowing me for probably less than 20 minutes was just, no. Copying this from another post of mine, when I discussed my depression and anxiety, both relating to chronic medical issues and very little hope for the future, both my own and the planet's, with the new psych, I got told this wonderful line, but what if everyone felt like that? Nothing would get done. Oh really? Thanks. Now I feel more worthless. Not me, but a friend of mine. He was taken to a mental hospital for trying to commit, and when he went to his regular psychiatrist after being in the hospital for a while, she basically told him that if he couldn't guarantee that he'd be alive by the next appointment, she didn't want to work with him, because it was a waste of time and recourses and he wouldn't be able to pay her, so he got fired from a psychiatrist for being mentally unwell went through a couple years where I was using Xanax and other drugs, got a DUI and license taken, had to go to a drug counselor to get it back. She had a weird shed building she had converted into an office so I was already feeling uncomfortable walking into someone's backyard for therapy. Got there for my first session and she immediately offered to get me a Xanax prescription after me telling her my drug history. Thankfully at this point I was already clean and had decided to stay that way. It was definitely a what the frick moment and I'm glad I didn't find her at a time where I would have been weak enough to accept the offer. Frick that therapist. Essentially it started sounding like they were giving answers they wanted to give. It didn't sound like they were saying what was needed. Also they didn't quite understand my complex issue. They gave out solutions and worksheets they too. Didn't take any time to actually know me. Made me feel like some run of the mill case. It didn't help that their worksheets basically didn't pertain to any of my issues. They were nice, courteous, and genuine, but their guidance was very misplaced. I had a long report written by a psychologist who had given me a thorough assessment. The therapist on the third appointment told me the report was probably wrong and I should just basically try harder. Mine wouldn't really talk to me, reflect, or provide any input. He claimed he wasn't supposed to say anything that it would be bad for our session. He just stared at me quietly and never really seemed to help or care. No emotion or engagement. I understand this is clinical. I'm not looking for a friend. I left after a few sessions, but the nail in the coffin was when he matched me with me on Tinder and hit me up on apps. I finally told him I was his patient, only a few weeks prior, and he acted all surprised and apologized. Gross dude. Every session, he asked me if I thought my mood was due to my period. Mental illness runs in my family. When I told my mom at 15 I was feeling depressed. She immediately got me into the doctor who referred me to a therapist. The therapist was not a good fit, to say kindly. She had my mom sit in on my first session and ask me about self-harm. I had been self-harming on a nearly daily basis at this point. I remember looking at my mom, who was sitting there crying and I straight up lied. I don't remember the rest of the questions, but one of them was if I had recently gotten out of a relationship. I hadn't. She then concluded with telling me that it didn't seem all the bad. She basically told me that being a teenager was rough and to get over it. I went a few more times and then suffered in silence until age 21 when my anxiety got so bad I was having trouble breathing and was put on antidepressants. I still struggled with self-harm and vague suicidal ideation until two years ago, when I finally put my fear of therapy aside and found a good therapist. I never got over my teenage troubles, because it was major reoccurring depression. I am on a good regime of therapy and medication now and am very adamant about my treatment. 
I am 29 now and feel like I've lost my entire teenage years and my 20s to depression. I question almost daily how I managed to live this far. When I spilled my whole life story and the therapist told me you need a therapist. Like no shoot dude. That's why I came. He admitted that he isn't really a therapist and mostly just deals with medications. His website lists him as a therapist. She told me I didn't have autism because I didn't act like her 10-year-old autistic son. Maybe because I'm not a 10-year-old boy? My mom forced me to see a therapist when I was in high school and that therapist proceeded to invalidate my feelings. Literally told my mom to kick me out of the house. Said that my online friends weren't real friends and that I should make an effort to make more in real life friends or hang out with the one in real life friend I had. Even though I do at school, and then wouldn't understand why I wouldn't tell my mom to her face that she was the reason behind my depression and anxiety because she had been physically and emotionally abusing me. Like what child would even feel comfortable saying that to their abuser's face? She also sided with my mom on everything and just thought I was being a terrible, moody teenager. I was glad when I went off to college and no longer had to see that horrible therapist, and she's ruined my perception of therapists in general. Pretty much when they just ask the same standard questions to make sure I wasn't going to kill myself. One of my therapists, we started solving his problems during the session. Another therapist I had got angry and yelled at me when I canceled an appointment because it had snowed two feet and I had to drive over a mountain pass that haven't been plowed to get to her office. I canceled because I was having a panic attack. One feel asleep all the time during our sessions. The last one stopped seeing me, because I told him some days I hate my children. He was a pastor, 